Okay, so for this video what we're going to do is talk about accessor methods and mutator methods and we're going to use this example of a TV show class. The idea is think of this as like a class for your DVR. So if you want to record a TV show, the software has to kind of keep track of that, manage all the different TV, TV shows that you want to record. So each scheduled recording needs to have a lot of information associated with it. So for this simple example, I've oversimplified it a little bit, um, but I've also added a little complexity so we see what kind of goes into software engineering sometimes. Um, I've assigned a TV show to have three instance variables. One is going to be the title of the show, which is going to be a string. One is going to be the start minute, and one is going to be the end minute. These are both int data types. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of abstraction here and do some craziness. We're going to define the start minute of a TV show to be the number of minutes since midnight of December 31st, 1999, and we're going to assume the local time zone to kind of take away some of the complexity here. And then the end minute is going to be the number of minutes since midnight, December 31st, 1999 as well. And this just happens if you do some division, since the largest possible int value is about 2.1 billion, if we go by minutes and ignore seconds, that means we can contain over 4,000 years of possible minutes. So then I wrote this little construct already, public TV show, somebody can pass in a title, they can pass in a start minute, they can pass in an end minute. Um, we can do a little bit of error checking here. If start is a negative value, we should have some kind of error statement. If, somebody, if the end minute is smaller than or equal to the start minute, we should also have an error statement. There are more sophisticated ways of doing this, but we're, you know, we'll deal with that later when we're a little more sophisticated. And then we do our assignments, and I've shown a, little, there's a reminder of both kind of styles. If title is the name of your parameter and title is the name of your instance variable, you're going to need to specify the instance variable value using this dot. And so this dot title is the instance variable, and it will be assigned the value of your parameter. Similarly, you could also opt for the styles of having different variable names, which has the advantage of no ambiguity whatsoever. Okay, now the purpose of this video is to talk about accessor methods first. An accessor method is just information that gets information about the object and doesn't mutate the object at all. In other words, it doesn't change the value of any instance variables. So what are some information, what's some information that you might want about a TV show object? Well, maybe you just want to get the title. In this case, there's nothing complicated about a title, right? Whatever string is passed in as the title is going to be considered the title of this TV show. It's hard to do error checking because just about any string could be a valid uh, title of a TV show. So anyway, all we do in this case is return this title. In other words, you just give it to whoever's asking. So what we need to do is create a method signature first. Now, accessor methods are always going to be public because anyone should be able to ask information about what's inside. The other thing about mutator methods is, well, actually, all methods, I should say, you always have to say what kind of data type this method returns. And actually, before I do this, maybe I should start with this. The idea here is um, we want somebody to be able, if they have a TV show object, let's say my show is a TV show object, we want them to be able to say, hey, get title and we want the idea we want my show I get title to become the title of the show so somebody could say string and again we're, we're assuming that my show is some existing television show and the idea is we want a get title method to exist so the job of get title is to simply return or find and get the title of the television show so how do I create a method that will allow that to happen well there are three parts of every method that you create. One is to state that whether it's public or private, you, then you define the return type. In this case, we want the get title method to return a string, right? Just like we have here, we're creating some string for the title. We want the myshow.getTitle method to actually become a string. So public string, and then you name the method. In this case, it's just get title. And then you always have open and close parentheses. If you want the user, you want the person calling the method to pass information into the parentheses, then you have to create a variable in there. But otherwise, in this case, we don't want people calling this method to pass any information because they're just asking for the title. So you leave it empty. And then you have open and close curly braces, and then you put any implementation inside the curly braces. Now, the keyword return is a special word for methods, and basically what it means is end the method abruptly and send whatever I have next back as the result. And in this case, we want the 
title of the entire TV show, the instance variable, to be returned. So you could say return title, or more formally, you could emphasize that this is an instant variable and say return this.title. Uh, that's a stylistic difference, and you'll hear computer, computer scientists argue about this, about which way is better. Um, I think I'm just going to say return title just because it's a little simpler and less wordy and we're just getting started. So congratulations, look at this. This is all you need to do. You've just written your first method. This right here is called the method signature. That's the top line. You've seen a lot of those things before, and the idea is that it gives you all kinds of information about this method, all kinds of ways that it can and should be used. The, the uh, code inside the curly braces simply represents uh, what code will execute when people call this method. Well, if somebody wanted to say, hey, get the start minute, then you would just do the same thing. You'd write all this, except that this would be int, and you would return get start minute. If somebody wanted to say, what well, get end minute, you would give it a title, return int, and return end minute. So let's do something a little more uh, substantial. Let's say we want it. somebody says, hey, what's the duration of this TV show? So we'll say public, and uh, let's say that the duration is supposed to be given in minutes. Okay, so we'll say that, that the data type that we want to return is an int, um, you know, the number of minutes of the television show, and we'll call this method get duration. Uh, there'll be no, no, nothing to be returned. Um, actually, I always forget to do this. Let's, I'm going to have some sample code here at the top to show you how this would actually look when it's being called. So imagine that somebody, once this class is finished, wants to find out the duration. So they'll create some int, they'll call the duration of, so again, this is code that you recognize from unit one. Somebody can create an int variable, they can call that int variable anything they want, and they'll ask the existing television show object to go get the duration, and the int value associated with this request will be returned. So when we're creating the method so that lines like this can be executed in the future, we want to then execute whatever code is necessary to do that calculation. And here, what we're indicating here is the data type of the result. In this case, all we need to do is return the difference between these two things. We're going to simply return end minute compile, and you'll see that that compiles just dandy. So however big this is, if I subtract however big this is, that will be some int and we will return it and so this will be the number of minutes so anyway that's all an accessor method is really they're almost always public you're gonna have to have some return type specifying what kind of data it returns you give it a name they usually have empty parentheses and then you simply return some value in the middle sometimes it'll involve some calculation sometimes it won't we'll do more some more sophisticated examples in class tomorrow now the other kind of methods that we're gonna focus on right now are called mutator methods or sometimes they're called setter methods and they kind of are the counterpart to get methods. If get methods job is to go in and just find out what the values of the instance variables are without changing them, a set methods job is to go in and mutate the show or go in and change the data t the data that's in there. So let's say we want to write a method that's going to change the title of the show. Very very simple uh, method. So the idea here is we don't need to create a variable. We would what if we just wanted to say my show dot set title. Uh, some new show. So if this is the title of the show, again, we need to create a method that's called set title that allows for some string to be passed in the parentheses, but nothing is returned, right? We're not expecting information back from this method call. We're just telling the show object to change its title. So in order to allow for this to be possible, we create a public method Again, since it doesn't return anything, the data type is void. Void is a Java keyword, you should remember that, and it just means that, that nothing is being returned by this method at all. And then we give that method a name, and then we create a variable that allows for the correct data type to be passed in. And then the purpose of this method uh, is simply for the title to be reassigned. So you can say title gets new show, and you're done. Again, if you wanted to be more proper, you could say this dot title gets new show, but that's a stylistic issue in this case. There's nothing, uh, there's no ambiguity, and so you don't have to have the this dot. I'll compile. You see that it compiles with the this dot. It compiles without the this dot. Now, frequently in set methods, because you're mutating the instance variables, you will have a lot of error checking in the set method because you don't want your instance variables, your precious instance variables, to be, to receive illegal data. 
Um, in this case, since we don't have any complicated ways of checking to see if the string for the new show is a valid name for television show, we're just going to leave it. But let's say we have a new method that's going to set the new end time for the for the television show. So we'll say public void uh, set end, and we're going to create a new new end. Now the fundamental code that this you know method represents is simply end minute receives new end minute. And you'll see if I hit compile, it compiles just fine. The only problem here is that what if somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing passes in a bad value for the new end minute? Then this is going to cause all kinds of bugs and possibly crash our program. So really what we ought to do is check this pretty thoroughly to make sure that the data that's being passed in is, is valid based on the uh, kind of abstraction scheme that we've chosen. So really what we'd want to do is say something like if, and then we'd want to have some kind of error checking. So here I've written some error checking here, end of minutes occurs before start. Um, and it, again, this is also, this is superficial. This is not really how you handle errors, but because we're noobs, this is how we're going we're gonna to take care of it. But if end of minute comes after that, well, then we'll just assign it and let it go from there. All right, so that's the fundamental concept of what an accessor method is and an, an accessor method and a mutator method. And we'll talk more about it in detail tomorrow. Thanks for watching.